Kia ora, Year 12. I was thinking about the question from the 2019 um, scholarship paper that I did earlier today, which needed a new technique for solving um, differential equations that went just a little bit beyond separating the variables. So the question I'm talking about is this one here. So probably it's best if you go and watch that video first. And in that one, I just did one example where we have to do this new substitution method. But I figure you might as well get good at it because it is a method that is really, really useful. And you will see it um, if you do the Math 199 course next year, I'm sure. Um, and it's called Solving Homogeneous DEs. Now, I could spend some time talking about what a homogeneous DE is, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to dive into these four examples. And all of them fit the pattern where we can use the substitution in that last video to make everything work out. So for those of you who are already feeling confident, what we're going to do here is in each case we're going to rewrite the equation so that we can have v, or u, but I've used v, so v is equal to y over x. And from there we're going to um, switch out the dy by dx for a, a, another um, derivative. So if you're feeling good about that scholarship question from 2019, go ahead and try these and just fast forward to check your answers. But if you'd like to go through it more slowly with me, that's what I'm going to do now. So the questions go from probably the easiest to the hardest. This one here is going to need you to have a little bit of um, inverse trig integration at your fingertips. So let's start with the first one. So we've got dy by dx is equal to x squared plus y squared over xy. And we look at it and we see that we can't split out the x's and the y's as it's written. So we, that's a little bit of a freak out moment, but it, it doesn't really need to be. What we're going to do instead is just rewrite it until we can see what substitution is going to work here. Okay, so here we've got x over y plus y over x. And if we're on the lookout for a y over x pattern, this is our chance to spot that if we let v equal y over x, then this is just v to the power of negative 1. Right, so if v equals y over x, then vx is equal to y. And this is exactly what we had in the last video. So dy by dx, by the product rule, is going to equal v, the derivative, um, the first function times the derivative of the second, which is 1, plus the other way around, dv by dx times x. So I'm going to take this equation and write everything in terms of v, so there'll be no more y until we get to the end. So v plus dv by dx times x is equal to v to the negative 1 plus v. And very happily, those v's um, cancel each other out, and that leaves me with a separable equation. So we've got dv, oops, turn off ink to shape, dv by dx times x is equal to 1 over v, giving me v dv is equal to 1 over x dx, and I can integrate both sides. So when I integrate this, I get 1 half v squared, and when I integrate this, I get the natural log of x, of the absolute value of x, plus, call it c, which we can write as the natural log of x, plus the natural log of some constant k, so that equals the natural log of kx. Now you could have done this with putting your plus c here, you'll just get a different kind of mess to clean up. Um, it doesn't matter too much, right? But you'll see when you go on and you do lots of these, you'll see that most of the time people do it this way, um, because you end up getting the log expression all sitting nicely in here. Okay, uh, I've got v squared is equal to 2 times the natural log of kx. And now I'm going to get an expression for v. So v is equal to plus or minus root 2 times log of kx. And it's time to switch out the v and pop in y over x. So y over x is equal to this. And my final expression for y is equal to this. So you can see that we're already start. I feel like I'm already starting to get very used to doing that substitution, and it really brings us back to a very straightforward level three merity kind of differential equation. So that's the first one done. So let's look at the second one, which is just about the same. So let me just find my working. So question two. Right. So question two: dy by dx is equal to y times x minus y 
over x squared. So cleaning that up carefully gives me xy over x squared minus y squared over x squared, which simplifies to y over x minus y over x squared. And we can go quite quickly now at my sub. So let v equal y over x, vx equals y, dy by dx is equal to v plus dv by dx times x. So now we're going to take this and we're going to chuck it all back in here. So v plus dv by dx is equal to v minus v squared. dv by dx is a very simple equation, negative v squared. Separating the variables gives me negative 1 over v squared dv is equal to, I've lost an x somewhere here, I think. Oh, I've lost an x. No, I haven't. Hang on. Let me check. Where's the, oh, I've lost the x in here. That's better. Yeah, okay. Right. I'm sure someone would have noticed that before I did. Okay, so here we've got 1 over x dx. Yep, that's more like it. Okay, now the integral of this going very carefully, is simply v to the negative 1. Right, so v to the negative 1 is equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of k. So 1 over v is equal to the natural log of kx. And 1 over v is just x over y. So x over y is equal to this. And that gives me a final... Um, general solution of y is equal to, nope, that's the wrong way around, y is equal to x over the natural log of kx. So that's question two done. And we've still got eight minutes left. Okay, if anyone is out there watching, I'm going to do questions three and four. Now, question three um, is where we start to need a little bit of inverse trig. So if you're watching this and you haven't done Cambridge maths, you might need to brush, brush up on that. I think I've done a couple of videos on those, but the two that you're going to need for questions three and four are these ones. I'll just get rid of all of that. Um, so the, the most basic one is that when I've got y is equal to tan inverse of x, dy by dx is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Right. So you can spot when you've got this, you know that you're going to get a, an inverse tan integral. And when I've got y is equal to sine inverse of x, dy by dx is equal to 1 over root 1 minus x squared. And the proof of both of those is really nice, and it uses um, Pythagoras and a little bit of implicit differentiation. But for this video, I'm going to take those results as given. Okay, so let's have a look at why we end up needing those for question three and question four, which, by the way, looks hideous, but it's actually not too bad. Well, question three, what do we get? dy by dx. Well, we can't, we can see that it's not separable as it's written, right, because we've got this thing here. But let's just divide out that bottom line. We've got one plus y over x plus y over x squared because we're getting faster at doing our substitution. So v is equal to y over x, vx equals y, dy by dx, yet again, is equal to v plus dv by dx times x. So we just need a little bit more working space. Right, v plus dv by dx times x is equal to 1 plus v plus v squared. The v's simplify away, and I'm left with dv by dx times x is equal to 1 plus v squared. So you can see the inverse tan starting to appear, kind of like the Loch Ness Monster. Right. Probably you guys don't even know what the Loch Ness Monster is, but I grew up with my mum telling me all about it all the time. So there we go. Uh, 1 over this dv is equal to 1 over x times dx. Integrating that gives me tan inverse of v equal to the natural log of kx. And we want to get an expression for y. 
so we can we can change back v into y now so tan inverse of y over x is equal to the natural log of kx and that gives me what well let's take the tan of both sides so y over x is equal to the tan of the natural log of kx so y is equal to x times tan inverse of the natural log of kx so there you go that's that question done right on to the very last one where we need another another trig inverse trig thing uh, but hopefully uh, what i'm hoping is that we've been doing this for 11 minutes now if you've watched from the start this should be starting to feel like just another technique that you've got to chuck at differential equation problems right so suddenly these things that you know at the start of today looked really awful now they're not so dy by dx is equal to the square root of 1 minus y over x squared plus y over x so let v equal y over x bx equals y dy by dx is equal to v plus dv by dx times x. Right? I think that's the key bit that you have to understand to make all of this work out. Okay, the rewriting part is really easy now. So we've got v plus dv, dv by dx times x is equal to the square root of 1 minus v squared plus v. And again, with this, you should be able to see, if you're watching this video, the inverse sign about to appear. Right, so we get what? 1 over, so rearranging, 1 over root 1 minus v squared dv is equal to 1 over x dx, we're going to integrate both sides. Now, I just want to check my working so that I don't screw it all up. Let's see. Over here, we get sine inverse of v is equal to the natural log of kx. So v is equal to sine of natural log of kx. So y over x. So y is equal to x times sine of log kx. So there we go. That's our final answer for that question. Um, thanks for watching. There is another substitution that I might teach you guys before the end of the year if I get time. Um, but this is just a good one to have in your back pocket for when we're doing DEs.